Well, good morning, everybody. Thursday morning, Darren Saul here, your host of Playing With Perspective, the suspended animation podcast. I have episode 87 here with the lovely Priya Mishra. How are you, Priya? I'm good. Thank you, Darren. Thank you for having me. Oh, my pleasure, Mishra. Thanks for coming on the show. And for everybody out there, we're going to be chatting about one of my favorite topics, how to become your industry's influential leader. So for everyone yeah. out there who doesn't know who Priya is, Priya is a person whose career is as colorful as her life. She has 25 years of tech and marketing experience. Priya is an acclaimed marketing strategist and consultant who is also co-founder of Exante, a marketing agency based in Sydney. Priya is an example of self-made success. She's a highly creative person, a bookworm. She loves culture and arts and is fascinated by futuristic opportunities. So we're going to be chatting all about marketing now and in the future and how to become a leader in your industry. So welcome, Priya. Thank you. Thank you for your kind words. <laughs> oh, my pleasure. You so did your homework. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, tell us a bit about you, Priya, that I might not have already covered. Give us a little bit of your story. Oh, yeah. I am a migrant, as you know. Um, being he I came here Australia 10, 11 years ago as a 457 visa um, holder, transferred from my Indian company, so, uh, one of the largest service provider, uh, joined the CBA. Before that, I came Perth and then CBA. And six years ago, I started my own business, which Lovely. has been a dream for me for my life. <laughs> awesome. And ha were you always in marketing or have you just kind of moved to marketing in the last six, seven years? Uh, I started my career in marketing initially, and then I transitioned to the technology because that time technology boom was like a lot of opportunity in India. A lot of American companies were coming. Yeah. So I just transitioned transition to tech, technology in 1996 mm -hmm. um, and then uh, since then I'm just in technology and, and also I work with a lot of um, web apps and uh, complex software and banking solutions and insurance solutions there are plenty of application I work in very complex environment right. very techy in techie position I have always hold um, but a few like six years ago I decided I, I was always fascinated about marketing so when I did my MBA in 2010 I majored in um, marketing and finance because finance was my current and marketing yes. was my transition I was always working on so since 2010 I was actually preparing myself to transition back to the marketing marketing space I love marketing too there's just something fascinating about marketing it's all based on human behavior human interaction yes. psychology and yeah you can, yeah you can forever and be an observer of human nature when you practice for sure marketing. for sure um in uh, there are many people are actually claiming these days that um business uh, business to business business to consumer but it's all about human to human like Absolutely. ultimately whom whom you are reaching out it's another human on another side you know 100%, 100%. no matter what position you are holding on on the any any company yeah. ultimately i'm trying to impress another human Absolutely. 100%. And particularly now with social media and digital marketing, even more so because there's always going to be one person behind that uh, profile or logo or brand or, you know, screen or whatever it is they're doing. There's a, you're reaching one person that's going to be interacting with you. So it's good. Yeah. To yeah. That's, that's one. See, I, I just wrote one small blog and it will be publishing soon. It says that, you know, you only need few people to believe in you. Yep. Right. You don't need too many people. You only need few people to believe in you and then life will take off. Yep. I love that. So true. And as they say, you have to build your tribe, your community, and it can be yeah. a small one to start and it grows from there, but you don't need to take over the world. You just need your loyal yeah. group, small group of people and you can do extremely well. Yeah. That's why I believe in creating more evangelists. I know it's not a right word for like, <laughs> <laughs> it's not politically correct word these days, but yeah. it's kind of creating evangelists. The more yeah. people will talk about you, the, the more people will trust you, more people will talk about you. Yeah they will become a human billboard for you. And then you don't have to think. You know? I love that phrase, a human yeah. billboard. I like that. I yeah. haven't heard of that one before. That's a great one. 
A human billboard. That's fascinating. Well done. So Priya, I mean, obviously now, you know, times of, you know, it's a tougher time for businesses as well over the last three to six months around the world. Um, how can business owners sustain? Should they ramp up their marketing? Should they tone down their marketing? What's your view on that now? See, marketing is actually evolving more than ever, mm -hmm. if you can imagine. So marketing is something which you can't even uh, think where we are actually heading because there's so much technology is actually coming into the market. Um, and it's like, you know, there was a time eight, nine tech, tech tools were coming in the market. Now 8,000 tools are getting introduced almost every day. It's not right? 8,000 tools a day. Yes. That's so the technology is evolving <laughs> like anything, you know. So it's just that we need to adopt. We need to understand how we are going to follow up. And see, most people were not. It has been predicted. Five years ago, three to five years ago, in the tech talk, Bill Gates predicted that this kind of a pandemic can come. Yeah. But we were not very much prepared. But now we got so badly hit. And every individual, every country, you prepare for many crises, but you have never prepared for any crisis like right. this. Right. But now we got the taste of it. And if you know, if you see the historically, human nature is actually evolved with the time. We adopt, we evolve, yep. yes, right? Definitely. We are evolving more than ever. Constantly. So, uh, you know, if we are going to tone down, then, you know, it is hard to survive. The, the things are getting more competitive. We live in a global village, which was one time Gandhi, Gandhi's dream that we yeah. are going to live in a home like village, um, global village. And we are living in a global village. We know more, more people than we can ever imagine. I never visited U.S. and Germany and yeah. I still know people from there, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's so reachable. And if we... Uh, if we will adopt, it's, I feel like every challenge is an opportunity. So this is a challenge, right? And we need to know how to tackle this. And to tackle this, we need to see this as an opportunity. See, like if I will talk about two years ago, and I was asking people, can we jump on the Zoom? Not many people were getting ready to jump on the Zoom on the call. Definitely. Right? But now everybody is saying, yeah, why not? Yeah, let's jump you know? on. People actually prefer it. They say, oh, ah, yeah, it's not meet up. Let's just jump on Zoom. Yeah. yeah. Acceptance is coming up, right? And you don't have to justify and argue. Like, they are just like this. Yeah, yeah. I, why not? When? Right? Yeah. And you can see, you can accommodate more people than you can go and travel and, you know, accommodate that time. Yeah. Right? 100%. So it's it's getting, to be honest, it's an opportunity. And the most most people get benefit the early you adopt, yes. right? So like most earlier adopter people are actually making more money from internet than people who are adopting later. True, right? very true. And it's been predicted by 2025, almost every human being will be on internet. Considering wow. India is ramping up and you know China is ramping up, which is the most populous country in the world. Yeah. If those people are actually and it, it, like I'm from India, India is like most people live in the village, but it's still they have a mobile in there. Yeah, and, it's still an internet and more connection. Than, yeah, more than fifty people have access to to the smartphone. Yeah, right. Yeah. So you can imagine where we are heading towards, you know, reaching out to the people, right? So you have volume. Yes. So volume is not a problem anymore. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. You, we need to know how to embrace that volume. Yeah. Right. We need to be prepared for that. So I would say that, you know, we, we have not, we have to dedicate ourselves and help with anything in line, like what's coming up. We have to be more connected. We need to actually look into more of our EQ side rather than, okay, there are a lot of people have, people say every next generation has the better IQ, yeah. right? We, we, all we need to ne ne need to check our EQ now, and it has been tested in this situation. Yes, right? definitely. Isn't it when we, me and you talk, we are going through the same situation. So if you, like people say, if you understand the pain, it's easier to connect. 
yes. right? Yep. So we understand the pain and we are, it's getting easier to connect with the human in this pandemic time. It's the time to embrace and adopt the situation, you know? Right. So yeah. everybody should actually turn, I think, turn up to answer your question. It should turn up and you should yeah. be prepared and embrace this opportunity. Go global. Yeah, absolutely. It's As you say, easier. Yep. As you say, you know, technology is allowing us to reach the world and yeah. the attention is all on all these platforms using technology. Yeah. Now's the time to really access that beautiful opportunity and go and go all in. Yeah. And like you, you have no limits anymore. Nope. No limits. No <laughs> limits at all. And the volume is immense. It's in, yeah. Opportunity through volume is immense. Yeah, Absolutely. it is. So, I mean, do you, Priya, do you specialize in more of the digital side or you're a marketing person that embraces all styles of marketing? I embrace all styles of marketing. Great. See, um, I believe digital is a tool, right? Yeah. And it has more access and more reachability, you yeah. know, and it's a modern way of doing marketing. Yeah. But ultimately, core of tech, uh, marketing is not yet changed. No. Right? So it was always there. It was like community oriented marketing was there when, you know, when is Harvard were actually popul populous, yes. right? Yep. About 10,000, uh, you know, boats were decking there. Yep. And the market was like, the, the market was hustling, hustling at that time. Yep. It, that's shifted to in digital market now, right? Very true. Very true. That's okay. And it's also helped people you know, if you have thousand dollar laptop, you are uh, you can become an entrepreneur, which was not possible in the industrial era, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Hundred yep. percent. Yep. So everybody, if you have vision, you if you know what exactly you want, and if you can reach out, if you have clarity in your mind and your message, there is no limit. Again, sky has no limit, right? Yep. The thousand dollar laptop can give you so much. Yep. You know? so so it's really about understanding the underlying psychology of marketing and using whichever means possible and whichever tools possible in the particular situation to reach your audience. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So now Priya, I've done a bit of research and I noticed that you love the term culturally conditioned organization. What does that mean? <laughs> it's it's a very uh, interesting concept. I uh, I was always fascinated about culturally context. Yeah. You know, when I was doing my management and leadership training, yeah. I did my management course. I told you um, MBA, and after that, I did a leadership co uh, training. And I used to run a first time leadership program at you know back in India, mm. and that time it I I found this culturally context. Uh, concept like different country has the different culture right yes, so sure. you know when we when you see it as an indian to me you perceive something about me very generic okay so it's, it's so generic uh, that you you actually build a stereotype which is negativity as well like it's okay some people every uh, coin has two sides right positive yes. and negative Definitely. so you perceive me as an Indian. If I meet a Japanese guy, I'll, I'll make it a different kind of a perception, right? So, and that happens because we know that particular island as a country, right? And, and we understand this is how their culture evolved, yes. right? Yeah. So I've been thinking about it and always, and I said, you know, it's, it's a micro level culture. Right, so a company, whether you are one person, two person, twenty people, thousand people, you have to have a culture in yes. the company, and you should be identified by that culture as well, right? And that helps you in a many ways. Say, if you have a, a culture in your company, and I know this company has this type of culture, as as a client, I have a certain expectation. Yes, right so true. your giving me education by from your side is gonna be like nullified right i know the basics right so we can talk on the second ladder now right we don't need to start from the beginning first thing second thing the the when the people who are working with you they will be more productive so let me give you a, a small example. Like if you live in a family, I, I grew up in a combined family, right? So we were like all cousins, um, three three uncles, family were living together in one house in my village, right? Yeah. I'm from a village side. Yeah. So 
we lived in the in in one house and it, we had a very nice culture right and um, so when you know that family culture it's easier to live together one thing and it's the product the life goes so smooth you don't have to think about yeah, because right? you all understand each other you're on the same page yeah and so like say a normal cleaning job like we wake up whoever wakes up early in the morning it was kind of a routine that you know whoever wakes up first like you know start doing a little bit cleaning yep. right and whoever um, gets the bathroom first straight away go without any asking and all so right. it's it's so smooth goes like productivity was so high you know yeah. so, so when when there is a proper system and if there is a proper culture its adoptability is higher and productivity is also higher right oh, so it's all side and then when you are happy when you like when you live in your home what happens you are happy right yes. you feel more comfortable in your home than the, your office Definitely. right so when you come to your home you are comfortable then what happens you go like when i start talking about i i do not forget to mention about my family i oh my mom used to say that my dad used to say that my oh my cousin did that you know like it's just that natural yes. uh, communication starts yes. and i start bragging about my you know upbringing yes. and the, my culture and the values i am naturally talking to you yes. right Definitely. and then your employee become one of your billboard again yes <laughs> right true. your employee your employees are following your vision you have to educate them with your vision if you are expecting you can't just you are not working with a robot no. right you can't say oh here is 10 job let's let, do it yes. by this time right you have to give them the reason and once they know the reason and purpose and the value behind it they will naturally adopt it very true very true so it's really a combination of making sure that you build your culture so you have a lot of efficiency and productivity and positivity in your workplace but that also allows the outside world and your customers to identify with your organization as a type of organization that provides this type of service or this type of yes. product or this type of quality so it's yes. really it works from within and from without Yes and it's like passion and enthusiasm you don't need to make it it will flow naturally Perfect I love it fantastic oh culturally conditioned organization So now, Priya I want to chat about the future because I know that you are you like to think about the future of marketing and you like to look yes. at future trends Yes Where do you think marketing is going in the future now you know we've discussed technology is moving at a rapid rate what's going to happen now Okay so if i say technology like if i say future of technology mm -hmm. you know how long siri been in the market it's nearly 10 years wow. right how many people has have adopted the siri concept like voice search not yeah. many yeah not many right yeah. right now there are 50.8% people are on the internet and we are going to evolve by 2025 almost every human being is going to be on the internet wow. right 100% the mobile users are actually increasing drastically at the rate of 35% right. right so mobile users are going to be more around you know personalization is on scale So if you see the market you know and if you look at the researches you know there are 93% businesses in you know is in is advancing on the personalization strategy yes right and we need to think about how you can actually become more impactful marketing because you have a, you know trillions of data available in your palm just in your palm right so how are you going to embrace that uh, you know that kind of a data you have to adopt the marketing intelligence because human brain cannot see even though the ability of human being is like a thousand trillion speed kind of thing right so it's it's the speed is very high and computer is going to adopt the same speed and if we will use the technology it is going to be more 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 productive more efficient and more accurate right yes. so if you will adopt that market and if you want to adopt to that market then it is going to be very very interesting to see how marketing has to be projected you know because if you look at marketing technology marketing budget growth is like 20 it's growing at the rate of 24% yeah. right so it's like in by 20 
it was in 2020, 2018, it was 220.96 billion or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. That was the that was the spend. It's gonna grow at the rate of twenty four percent. Then it is gonna be two hundred and seventy four point something, you know, oh. billions. So that's the budget we are talking about. Yes, there are a lot of fraud coming, ad frauds, and all is coming. Cybersecurity is in at risk, and all those things. But this is what happening. So you know, and we are actually the time frame by 2022, 2025 is gonna increase thirty two percent to forty five percent, right? Mm -hmm. So how we can actually use all that future, future data and future prediction and adopt ourselves, what's gonna, say when you talk to people, people plan for 90 days, one year, three years, and five years, right? We are already in 2020, right? right? 2022 is only two years, which is within three years of your range, right? And 2025 is like five years plan, yeah. right? Yeah. We are planning for five years, it, it, it is, it, this is not going to change the technology and modernization is not going to happen, you know, in the time. True, it's true. there. It's nearly there, it's right? True. So we need to be ready to adopt that. Yeah. Right? And what do, they, what do they say about, um, like, do you think that voice technology is going to be the next big thing? It's already there. Already there. We are late. We are late. <laughs> but when will it be at scale? It should be scaling and it will scale by 2021. I'm thinking, I'm not thinking it's, it's a research data showcase that by 2021, most of the people has to go into the voice search. Really? They have to accept it. Really? That's Otherwise, if you're not accepting by 2021, you will be missing a lot of information. Wow. And then because furthermore, there'll be more um, adaptations of how we market on voice. Yeah. I mean, think about the small example, the car which we are going to use it. We are, you, are you going to touch your mobile and search something? You're going to ask Siri, yes, can you tell me? Yep. Absolutely. Right? When your car will be crossing by this road, it will tell you there are 10 uh, restaurants nearby one Indian, two Chinese, uh, five <laughs> Australian. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> right. It's going to happen. Yeah. Right. And if you're not there, you're not in that count for That's Siri right. and Google or Alexa. Wow. Right. So you are already missing. We are behind. We are 10 years late. City has been introduced for 10 years now. My God. Right? Younger generations are more adaptable to that. Younger generations are already avoiding typing. They are actually asking questions. Yeah. I, I've just started every now and again saying hi Siri or hello Google or whatever, but I'm just getting there. <laughs> yeah. And we will be doing, wearing more wearables, like, you know, more ring more um, watches, you yeah, know, right. necklace, all that. And all that wearable will have the sensors. Wow. Right? So you'll be transiting more data. Yeah. And if you are transiting more data, and if you want to be found, you have to adopt, at least as a business, if not at the personal level. Absolutely. And from a marketing point of view, we have to start thinking about how we utilize voice technology for our marketing purposes. Because that's yeah, not, next, not only next, voice yeah. technology, the AI. Or AI, exactly. The whole AI is, is there. You, you have to just be ready as soon as possible. Yeah. People are suggesting by 2025, there will be already some robots in the, in the operation theater. Wow. We, wow. Right? And we will be naturally growing heart and kidney and, you know, in the lab. You don't have to wait for donors. Wow. Right. If that's the scenario going to happen, then if you are actually the, the whole health industry is going to disrupt, especially after this pandemic. Right. Mm -hmm. They're going to be more prepared for this kind of a situation, considering the human behavior is, you know, the way human behavior is actually work, going on. They yeah. have to be ready for more pandemic like this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and if, if, even if it is not going to happen, they will be more ready because they have seen once. Yes. Right. So if it is like, if that's going to be the future, then you, there will be a lot of people coming into the more technology based, you know, wearable satellite system is there, drones are there, autonomous uh, cars are there, flying car is coming there, you know, the, the, we are going ahead of, uh, you know, something like Iron Man type of um, condition yes. is going to come. Yeah, that's you cool. Know? Yeah, yeah. I want to fly around like Iron Man too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, in, in not in the terms of flying only, in terms yeah. of like, um, uh, it's going beyond the world search now very soon. Definitely, definitely. Fantastic. Love it.
Absolutely. So we all have to make sure that we right are on top of our marketing and our understanding of marketing. So we know yeah, how to, especially when you're preparing your three years and five years plan. Yes, you have to be ready for that. That's right. And so we have to understand how we can utilize these new frontiers yeah. to achieve the same results. Yes, it's, it's, sure. you know, we're still marketing the underlying psychology is there, the methodology is there, but there's new tools and new frontiers. Yeah. Method. And people are getting the data more accurately now. Right. So if you like, uh, if you think about marketing, you have to think about intention as well. Mm. So the intent based marketing is going to be more futuristic approach. So you need to know your consumer's intention mm. and then you need to target that one. Otherwise, Marketing is not going to give you any outcome, no matter how much, because it's so noisy, mm. it's hard to whisper. Absolutely. Yep. Who true. will listen your whisper? Yep. That's very true. Very right? true. Right? It's already noisy and we have only 50% popula population as on an internet, if crazy. it is the correct data. What if it will increase? That's it crazy. I mean, think about it. It's so noisy at 50%. Imagine what it's going to be like at 100%. My God. Yeah. So that's what it is. That's where we are heading. So if you are not in finding the right intention and right consumer for yourself or mm -hmm. customer for yourself, then it's going to be really hard to sustain in the market. Great. Perfect. And so Priya, I know, I want to know a bit more about what you do and how you do it. And in particular, your Exante effect. Tell us more about that. Okay, so um, uh, I, I am a big believer of bringing the human IQ and EQ together, right? Yeah. If you look at my slogan, it says ideation with fearless creativity. Love it. Okay, the reason I started marketing, because I, like, I am passionate about marketing just because two reasons. One, one, it is evolving with my technology, like it's technology. I love technology. Mm -hmm. right i w would love to embrace it but at the same time i love creativity as well i've been in a, i was a theater artist for 13 years oh really right? yeah so i felt that my creative uh, i feel like you know my left and right brain is still active yep. you know and i feel like if you are actually you if you have idea like in, in when we were working in the technology world we were bringing in an idea creating a lot of scenarios and eliminating all the hypothesis, you know, and finding one right hypothesis and working on the actual solution on it, right? Yep. It's science, yep. right? And that's the ideation. If you want to reach out to the human, we have still emotion there, right? Yep. So, we need to have that creativity part. We need to have that emotion. And when I build my strategy, I always try to find out. When people talk about customer persona, they are very much focusing on demographic, you know, that industry and a hell other things. Sure. Very few people are focusing on psychometrics, right? They know this is one of the pillar. Everybody knows that. It's out there in every internet. You look for the customer persona. It's talks about demographic, psychometric, and all those things. Mm -hmm. Very few people actually create their strategy based on the psychometrics. Let's just, can you define for us exactly what that means, the psychometrics? So uh, you need to understand what's your consumer psychology. As I mentioned, the intent-based marketing. So when you look at your Google Analytics, simple example, right? It's not very advanced, unpaid one. You go to your Google Analytics, it, it is started talking about human behavior. Mm -hmm. right your consumer behavior who actually visited your website what kind of searches they are also doing it mm -hmm. like if you look at the google analytics is the data is already there yep. right and when i look at that and if it is not relevant say if i'm not targeting the fashion industry today in case if i'm not targeting the fashion industry today and there are a lot of visitors from fashion industry then i need to look at in look at that what kind of a keyword and masses I'm sending that I'm attracting that kind of a consumer. Mm -hmm. And it's time to reevaluate whether I, it will be a real good prospect for me or not. Yeah. Right? Sometimes you don't know. That's true. That's Sometimes true. you don't know who is looking for you and whether it is the right uh, person for you or not. But then when you actually meet it, meet that person, you say, oh yeah, it would be nice. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. that's why. Right? I have to be so looking at the data in more detail, 
and understanding what else they are searching, what's their interest. And if that's your customer persona, and if you know their interest, can you create a message like that? Yes, exactly. So that's psychometrics or psychographics. I've heard the same type of term. Yes, yeah. So you need to understand the human intention and behavior, the psychology, and then if you create your content strategy around it, then right. your marketing strategy will match with that. Perfect. So is that what you mean when you say your exante effect is really looking at I mean. psychographic so, psychometrics? Yes, and there is much more. Like it goes much details. <laughs> it could be another topic on. Fantastic, <laughs> 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 and. What I love is, I love case studies or examples. Maybe, can you give us an example of a journey that you went on with a client and what you did and then how, how you worked with them and what were the results? Obviously, being yeah, so confidential. When I start with my client, I always meet, ask them, okay, do you have your business model? Mm -hmm. Right? And trust me, there are not many people have the business model. They have business plan. Right, which is 40 page, 50 page, 100 page document. Yeah, yeah. How many of you are actually living and breathing that document? That's true. Not many. Created it, it's sitting there, you know <laughs> it is there. And someone, some like any investor or anybody will ask, you know it is there, I can flip you through. <laughs> <laughs> you are not living and breathing that document. Right. And, and, and also, it might have changed, changed 100 times since you first wrote it. Yes, it is. So that's why it's not a living and breathing document if you haven't updated it. That's right. right? Same with your, con like I, I met a couple of people and they have website, nice website, which been been created five years ago. Mm -hmm. And when I talk to them, their website and their own conversation is two different conversations. Yes. Right. So when I'm talking to you and my website and my communication is going in two different direction, I'm confusing you. Yes. Right, because there is no way you will not go and look into me. Yeah. Right. Cool. These days, the moment you hear about something, before you meet, you think yep. like, oh, let's check on the somewhere in social media what she yep. does, what actual her behavior yep. is, Absolutely. how was her response to her people, and things like that. You're yep. gonna go and check. Sure. Right. Um, so if your communication is in a two different direction, it's gonna be hard. And I'm not saying it's a two different direction, but if you assume your consumer is going to say, oh, this is how I started. This was my initial vision. Vision is going to evolve. If it is not evolving, you have no dream. Mm -hmm. yep. True. Right? Yep. It's just that one time thought yes. came and it stayed there. Definitely. Right? Because it's a basic human nature that we have to evolve. Otherwise, we will not grow. And we will not grow. We will not feel fulfilled. 100%. In our life. Definitely. Right? So if you are not updating yourself and you're, everything, everything is not synced, then you are confusing your customer. Yes. Right. And if you are confusing your customer, you are not getting your customer. So that's one thing I work with them. So if you have business model, and when I say business model, it's just a nine pillar, right? Yes. It's one page of document, it, not even document, it's a slide, I'll say. It's a slide which you have like nine different pillars, and you know what exactly you are working, and you can actually live and breathe and update that document every day with your every update you are thinking. Perfect. Okay. Yep. And then I am, my major focus is based on the value proposition. So I just extract that value proposition and I say, okay, this is your value proposition. Let's talk about it and create a marketing objective. Right? Once you've got the marketing objective, rest, everything is easy. Yeah. Because yeah. you, you know, know where you want to go, then you can find out how to get there. Yeah. Your GPS will work anyway. That's right. Yeah. That's right. You have, but you have to put a destination in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you need to be ready for detour. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> there, oh, we know that. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah. But ultimately, end goal is, is there. Most people complain about they have no time. And I feel like time is actually priority, based mm -hmm. on priority. Yep. Everybody has the time and yep. nobody has the time. That's right. It's how you prioritize the time. If you have the priority, you have the time. If you don't have the priority, you don't have the time. It sounds harsh, yep. but this is the reality. Oh, very true. Absolutely. Totally agree. Fantastic, <laughs> Bria. Fantastic. So, so you got, and you work with all sorts of different organizations in different sectors, or do you have a niche or a preference? Uh, I work with uh, anyone who has a growth vision. 
right? Because mine, I'm not offering lead generation, mm -hmm. right? I'm, I'm not a lead generation solution. So if you are desperate for lead, mm -hmm. I would recommend you to someone who is really good in the lead generation. Mm -hmm. I am a reputation person. I'm a brand positioning person. I'm a long-term vision person, yes. right? So I would help you in that way. So if you have a long-term goal in a, a right vision, to grow yourself and reach, you have five year, three year, 10 years plan, then I'm the person to talk, right? No matter which industry you are in. But I am very, I go along with a lot of good with a lot of technology company, finance company, because I worked in that and I understand their jargons. Yes. So professional services actually do like me. That's the feedback I always get. <laughs> yeah. Most professional services actually like me and they, they feel comfortable working with me because they think that I can understand their jargons and, right. you know, uh, I can talk their language. You know. Beautiful. Perfect. Perfect. Well, Priya, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your knowledge and your expertise and your insight. You know, I've learned a lot. I always love podcasting because I learned so much from my conversations <laughs> with everybody. It's a great opportunity, you know, to know more people. Absolutely. You know, and I'm, I'm a marketer myself, but everyone I talk to about marketing, I still pick up more ideas and more yeah. strategies that I can use. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, in, in, in ancient India, people say knowledge is everywhere. You can learn from an ant and an elephant. Doesn't like matter that. where the knowledge is spread. It is like there. It. You want to learn it. Yep. So true. So yeah. if people want to get in touch with you, Priya, what's the best way for them to do that? Uh, I have in my website, exonted.digital. It's quite up to date. I keep changing it. Um, also, I'm very active in social media, especially on LinkedIn. So, you know, feel free to reach out to me. Perfect. And all my details are on my, my website, which is just www.exonted.digital. Uh, pretty straightforward. <laughs> no, no, so, dot .digital, no dot .com, no dot .au. Just no, no. Dot .digital. No, I'm global. Oh, I'm very global. cutting edge. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic and i'll put those links in the show notes for everybody as well that will be great um, thank you and uh before you leave us i always like to ask my guest leave us with one or two tips that you can give us today that might help our viewers and listeners on their journey in building their business what, what would you like to leave us with if you if you want to build a business build a brand and if you want to build a brand make sure there is a brand ambassador behind it. Like so if it. you have a brand ambassador, which could be you, yep. then people can connect you much easier than just projecting what your company is. Gotcha. So you're saying build a brand, like a corporate brand, but it's also great to have a personal brand behind it. Yes. Like that's it. why I need a brand ambassador. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's so true these days, more and more, particularly with social media, you know, you're, you're as I said before, you're, you are the person behind the brand and you are very visual and seen and connect and you interact with everybody. So it's nice to build that personal brand that represents your organization and your culture and your philosophy. Yeah. And more people are turning to more visual is yep. getting more important. Definitely. Right. Particularly with video and photo, you know, you need some, uh, something behind it. A logo is not enough anymore. Yes. Yep. No. So true Priya. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. It was a lovely Thanks show. I've enjoyed our conversation. Yeah, always. I always like talking to you. <laughs> ah, thank you. And for everybody out there, if you want to learn more, um, go and check out exante.digital. Yes. And I'll put all those notes, all those links in the show notes for everybody. And uh, I'm sure Priya will be very happy to chat with you. Thank you. Thanks for your viewer and for listening to me. And thank you for everything. Fantastic. And for everybody out there, have a great day and we'll be back very soon for another episode. And bye for now.